All right, let's get this show on the road. This is going to be a shorter video this week because <laughs> not a lot happened the past two weeks. Uh, not as much as I wanted to get done anyway. Um, so hi, if you don't know, I'm working on a project that's basically kind of just like a fancy to-do list. It's got like, imagine uh, a splits timer for speed running mixed with a to-do list and that's that's the basic idea uh, you can watch past episodes if you want to know what's actually going on here uh the past week and a half so past weekend i was actually out on a trip up to see some family i did spend some time every day i still worked on it um, i didn't get as much done of course um, but i did still spend time on it and the biggest thing that we were doing is working on the mvc refactor which was kind of a so I was I was taking an online course and the MVC architecture was brought up and I was like, oh, this is so beautiful. This looks so clean and I want to apply this to my project. And so I was like, I'm going to do that, not realizing that it would have taken like 12 hours and two weeks to do. So um, and I was kind of already working towards this. So this is what the project folder looks like now. And it could be like a lot cleaner but I'm stopping it because I realized that um, it's just not, it's like if I, the goal is to actually get things done here and I think as cool as it is to have everything pretty, I don't want this to be like a perfect project. I want this to be a getting things done project. So that kind of brings me into the next point, which is that during this whole time, and basically the past two years, I've been learning. So the basically up until like, January of this year, I had been just focusing on learning the technology that I needed in order to start building this project. Uh, mostly the Node.js stuff, um, databases, uh, front end development, that type of thing, design. Uh, the past couple months I've been getting really, really into design stuff. Um, of course, not really getting very far with it, but alas, you know. So the idea here is, is and the reason I bring this stuff up is part of the reason I realize is that I am working on the project and learning on the project in parallel now. Um, so what that means is that I'm learning about things that I should have done hours ago. <laughs> things that I, decisions that I should have made before I started working on this project. Um, for example, like figuring out what I'm going to be working on, what I'm not going to be working on. Um, and then being a little bit clearer on that, because I think I let the past couple weeks, and I'll get to this in a second, is I kind of let the features get out of hand. Um, so I, I brought, reeled it in a little bit in terms of what I'm actually going to try and accomplish. Um, so this is just kind of like, these are some of the courses that I've taken. I'm currently going through, where is it? Um, this web designer course, I'm doing the clean code. This one's actually really interesting. Uh, Jonas Scheinman, Schmidt. Schmidman? I don't I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He makes a lot of great courses. I've gone through almost all four of the ones that he has, which are like somewhere between 30 to 70 hours each, which is what I spent the most of the past bit working on. So anyway, as I've been going through this, and this is where the MVC refactor came from finishing up the JavaScript course, is he mentions this architecture. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is great. I need to work on this. And I, I, I learned about it after I had already started and worked on all this other sort of stuff. So it was like, it ended up costing me 12 hours of time in order to get where I am now, which isn't even technically done because it could be better. Um, but I think I just kind of have to accept that as I'm learning and as I'm growing with this stuff, I'm going to be learning about these new techniques that if I were to go back and fix, so to speak, or do it the way that I've learned about now and going forward, I'm just going to keep, I'm basically going to make like one step forward, half step backwards, and then it's just going to keep this cycle up. So what I think I'm going to do is, is implement a, everything I learn is going to be a going forward thing. And unless it's really needed, then I'll go back and fix it. Like I won't, I won't be spending another two weeks trying to fix something that wasn't really broken in the first place, unless it gets really bad um, or I like, I don't know. I, I need to figure out why or what my limitation is for how much I'm gonna deal with. But the goal is going forward that I won't be wasting time 
on making things perfect and pretty. It will be functional and that will let me reiterate on it in the future when I want to. Um, so that's kind of the this part. I also have been reading, this is just the past couple weeks, um, since February. Um, so this you know, uh, design book, you can ignore this one. This one wasn't, wasn't that great. Um, uh, agile software development, I've been using that a lot. That's where the idea of this video I, uh, devlog series came in was, oh shoot, we're not even listening to music. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I don't know, sorry, just music. Um, so software development principles, uh, elements of user design. I just finished that one yesterday. Uh, this one's really good. Again, more information I just learned about the past couple of days that's like, I should have thought about that like months ago. Um, and that's kind of where it's just part of the problem of working in parallel with that stuff. So uh, you see nothing is here because there we go, because <laughs> I was going to talk. Um, so I kind of let, and I, I've, the past couple of weeks, if you've been keeping up with the project or not, I've been talking about all the features and cool ideas. And last week, I even went through and talked about some ideas I had for features to make it more sustainable and like just a better overall project. Um, and I realized that as I've been doing that, I, I've just been overloading with requirements that don't need to be there so i went through today actually and i sat down and i was like okay look i can't i can't keep adding new features i can't keep i can't keep having good ideas i just i have to stop i'm getting rid of that part of my brain i'm only having bad ideas now and i'm just gonna go full forward with it um no but in in some sense of seriousness that i'm I'm choosing three features that are going to be the only things I'm working on for the first version. After that, I will decide whether or not I keep working on this project uh, and add some of the other features that I talked about. I'm kind of leaning towards adding these, but so the first feature, which is is kind of at the very beginning, was creating and ending sessions, creating, editing, viewing, previewing, all that sort of stuff. So sessions is the first one that is a must. It is a very core feature. The second one is tasks tasks and features that, that's the whole the whole project is intertwining the two of them uh the third thing is i want to say it's the productivity and uh break timer um i think those those three things are basically what i really want the core of this project to be because other things other ideas that i had i realized that i can do elsewhere so for example this is oh you can't see it there we go uh so these are three different mock projects. I've created a, a few more of these, but I realized that most of what I wanted out of this and most of what I was like, oh, it would be really cool to have like a, a working log book so I know like what I was working on, where I left off so I can pick up things easier. Like these types of ideas that I get are 90% just like having a form to fill out and then save the data and then be able to look at it. So I've been, I've been experimenting with um, using Google Forms to create these types of things. Like last week, I talked about the wellness assessment thing. I actually finished going through that with Jashi to be, and it is literally a 40 questions that are like this. And I'll show you in a second uh, the results of them. But it's really, I actually, like, it lets me play with the actual idea itself without having to do all the programming design work. It is literally just like, how do you make like a very, very minimal, like, viable product in order to play with it so that I can get ideas for whether or not I want to actually have this moving forward. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind this is that I can like all the feature ideas I get, like most of the time, like I can just use post-it notes <laughs> for a lot of the stuff that I'm thinking about. I was like, Oh, having a, a log book of accomplishments, like, yes. Could I do that? Could it take two or three weeks to implement? Yes, of course. Could I just write it on a post-it note and keep it in track or write it in a Google Doc? Yes, of course. The idea is that, it, of course, it's in a cool project, but I think that if I keep doing this, if I keep adding all of these little feature ideas to the programming part of the project, then I'll never finish it. Um, and I'll never be able to work on the three other projects that are happening after this one. Um, so all of that to say, I'm working on, so, ooh, so let's go back here for a second. 
Uh, the refocus guide is actually the clarification one. So this one's actually been really helpful and I'm excited to see where this one goes because I'm, I have like a, this one might actually be like more useful than I was originally thinking. Uh, last week I, I talked about the idea of having basically something that would help you clarify what you're working on. So I find that a lot of times the reason that I procrastinate or that I work on other things is that I'm not, I don't have a really clear idea of what I'm doing. Like if I've been told to program some component or some feature, or some product, and I'm in control of it, I have, I'm like, just like, okay, where do I even start? Like, what do I do? Like, or sometimes I'm like, I get distracted. Like, this is why it's called a refocus guide for, or at least why I called it. It's because I, I realized this past week and a half has been mentally very difficult for me in, not in like a challenge. It's, it's been challenging in the sense that I feel like I've lost most of my short-term memory <laughs> and I cannot focus for the life of me. The reason there's 25 post-it notes here is because I literally have a post-it note that was like, drink water, take care of the cats, make dinner. I just, I can't focus for the life of me right now. And as, so I'm like in school and work and I'm like, it's Saturday, but I, I feel like I've got like 25 billion things that I have to do. And I, I want, this is part of the reason why I'm building this project first place and part of the reason why I like the idea of having a clarification guide and refocus guide is so that I can help reduce the cognitive load of deciding organizing and managing the everyday stuff like I want to be able my goal is that eventually this project will take all of the mental strain of figuring out like weighing different things that need to be done due dates and all that sort of stuff and most like there's other systems out there like the getting things done system there's the procrastinate on purpose one there's like a, there's all these other different like even to-do lists trello boards like all, i've tried all this stuff but and the one thing i realized is that it, it would accrue a lot of uh, management debt because simple things weren't automated the way that i wanted them to be automated and so i was like well if i there's certain, there's certain things that I think I can do going forward. Yes, there'll be a lot of technical debt because I'm the one building it and maintaining it, managing it. But I think that also the, the benefit of having a specifically designed system for me to get rid of my cognitive load and being able to just focus on what I need to focus on and not have to worry or think about all the other 10 billion things going on, I feel like that is definitely worth it. Um, at least I hope. Plus, it's a learning project. I'm really passionate about this stuff. And this is by far, I think, the most interesting thing I have going in my life right now. <laughs> um, just in the sense that, like, I've, I've let it consume a large part of my mental estate. Um, and I'm okay with that because it is very interesting and very fun. So let's look at the, this is the, I talked about this a little bit last week where I went through with ChatGDP, did a whole bunch of research on burnout, and I changed it to be, um, just more broad types of burnout and then created, so there had it went through like, I don't know, 50, 60 different pages and discussions and forums about burnout, about uh, occupational burnout, personal burnout in the developer community. And then had ChatGDB compile, define and like condense them down into things and then create questions from them. And so that's what the whole wellness thing is. So this is the results of the, me taking it just now. So it's moderate, like it's not, and if you go back here, like it would be it would just questions like, I don't know if you can read this or not, but my values and beliefs align with the expectations placed upon me. Strongly disagree, strongly agree. And you have neutral in the middle. Um, so this kind of like saying, I'm just kind of like in the middle for most of this stuff. Um, I've got a lot of personal growth opportunities right now, but I, and it's funny is this is like last week or whenever I was building it, I would say this has definitely gone up <laughs> in the past week. Uh, with my second school starting up again and having to take calculus, not knowing calculus. So anyway, um, so this is the refocus guide now. Uh, this is one of the other mock projects. Um, identifying, and I, I walked through with ChatGDP again on this type of stuff, because this is the interesting things I like to use it for. Um, so walks through, I was like, okay, I'm having difficulty concentrating. I'm constantly losing focus. I, I need some sort of repeatable thing that I can do to, to get me from in a distracted state back to f 
focused clarity and like on task. So what are you focusing on? Like when do you first notice you're distracted? What caused your distraction? Do How do these factors play into it? Like stressed, anxious, um, mind wandering, task up to boredom, physical fatigue. And then second step, and this is on a different page, is describing the, the main goal of what I'm working on, the next three steps of it. Um, and it just kind of like it walks you through mentally. Cause I think most, like a lot of this stuff is just like, I feel like so much stuff when it comes to like productivity techniques or like things that we could be doing, like I'm trying to figure out how to describe this. It was like, imagine if like the benefit of working out came from just the practice of going through these, like the steps of working out. Um, so it's like, we can just have these steps available to us, like, and not have to just figure out how to work out every time. Um, it's a, a very weird, not great analogy. So I, I will come back with you with a better one if I can think of it. Um, like I'm trying to think like, what, what could you use? There's so much stuff that is able to be systemized and able to be turned into a template, turned into a guide that we do so frequently. Um, that like, uh, if you've ever read the checklist manifesto, that, that's probably the best example. That, that's basically what this is and kind of where I got the inspiration from this. The checklist manifesto is this book. Um, one of the examples in the book, it really, it's just, it's a book about checklists, uh, but like in a nerdy way. <laughs> if there's a non-nerd way to talk about checklists. Um, so uh, let's see, the, the key example, a key story from that book was about pilots. There was so much going on with flying a plane, with landing it, making sure the fuel stuff, like the 10 billion knobs, right? So they realized that we couldn't, we can't mentally store that much tasks, things to do in our head. And so what they realized is that if we have a checklist, something that we can easily walk through step by step um, when we need it, when we need access to the uh, guide, to the operational, there was some word for it that he used. Um, so anyway, they, they, they realized that they could use checklists and manuals and guides um, and that using these and implementing them for pilots, people who have lots of cognitive things, allows them to focus on the most important stuff and it reduced crash rate, it like improved mental fatigue, like uh, mental stability, like all this sort of stuff with pilots. So that same basic concept where we have all of these procedures and, and things that we go on, uh, creating systems and templates for that helps reduce the cognitive load because you only need to be prompted with the questions when you're going through that. Uh, and I do so much stuff. I feel like that when I step back and, and look at it, um, can really just be kind of brought into this procedural checklist template. So this is kind of like a, 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 a mental checklist for when you're distracted, having someone prompt you on these things. I want to do something like this for debugging when programming. Uh, there's, there's so much stuff. It's like, um, like if you're writing writing a technical paper and having someone walk you through the things to think about while writing it I, i've explained the, the idea enough i think um but i think there's a lot of value in that and even if it's just google forms that's giving me that value so i don't necessarily need to build this out into something more uh, complicated yet uh, but th that's that's the basic idea i think there's a lot of things that this can be applied to. Uh, so last week, actually, technically this is two weeks ago because I didn't, mm, I guess this is last week's. Um, I said I was going to try, once I finished the MVC refactor, that I was going to try redesign notifications and implement the command pattern. Um, didn't get to either of those. Uh, I this, this arrow here means that I've kind of like said it's done enough for now and it's going to be pushed off to the future. Um, <laughs> So really, it, I've kind of got to this point like last week and I was just saying this where 
my focus, my ability to focus has gone down so much. Um, so I really need to, to cut down on what I'm doing. So that's kind of where I'm like, I'm changing things up. The only thing I'm working on next week, I'm gonna forget about the MVC refactor. It's already done enough. I'm gonna clean up GitHub. I've got a whole bunch of branches that can be deleted. And I'm gonna just focus solely on designing, walking through every step of creating the actual page. I realized like the projects was cool. It spent like I put, like three to four weeks on the project page and all of that type of stuff. And that the main thing of this project comes down to the timer. I haven't even started working on the timer yet. I mean technically, but the idea is that I'm going to be focusing on the most important and core features now and then working outwards. Because uh, I was working from the projects and tasks uh, to-do lists and working towards the timer and now I want to work on the timer and work outwards to what I actually need uh, so that's my new objective that's my new goal this week thanks for uh, listening to me rant about focus and checklists for a little bit. see you next week